What's up guys, Humphrey here. So a lot has been happening in the markets recently. The entire crypto market has been struggling with Bitcoin and Ethereum notably down around 13% and 18% in the last month. And in the stock market, things are turbulent to say the least. The S&P 500 has returned minus 1.46% year to date and the NASDAQ is down 4% at the end of close on Wednesday. The most pain, however, has been in hyper growth stocks like Shopify, Zoom, and other Kathy Wood type picks. Since November, the ARK Innovation ETF, which solely invests in growth stocks, has returned an abysmal negative 30%. Now, since I make videos on personal finance and investing, I've been checking my own portfolio way more than I should, and it's been a painful couple of weeks. The only thing seeming to go up these days is my blood pressure, LOL. So today we're gonna talk about why the market and your favorite stocks have been struggling, and a lot of it has to do with what the Fed is actually doing, what moves they're making, in addition to inflation numbers. When I look at what's happening in the markets, there are three main factors that are causing a lot of pain that we're seeing. These three factors are all connected to each other and have become increasingly important in the recent months. So the first of them is inflation. I know that this is a topic you're probably tired of hearing about, but it's super important because on Wednesday morning, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics released their new CPI data. If you don't know what CPI means, don't worry, it's pretty simple. So CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. It's a way to measure the price of a basket of everyday items from one time period to another. So the Bureau of Labor Statistics will basically track the price of a whole bunch of goods, for example, like milk, gas, fruits, meat, etc., and they'll add all of those prices up in one month in one basket. The next month, they're gonna do the same thing. They're gonna buy all those same goods again, but then they're gonna calculate the percent difference in price. They will also then compare that price of the basket to what it cost in previous periods, such as a year ago and a month ago. Those are the most common reference points. The CPI report that came out on Wednesday morning noted that the year-over-year -year inflation percent change was actually 7%. That's the fastest pace since 1982, according to this Wall Street Journal article. Now, what's actually pretty funny is that even though inflation is at, like, ripping highs, the stock market reacted mostly positively on Wednesday, with the Nasdaq up around a quarter percent, and same with the S&P 500. The reason being is that the inflation number was in line with what we expected. That just goes to show you that the stock market sometimes will care more about what the expectations are, and if we met those expectations rather than the seemingly alarming data at hand. It's almost like if you tell your mom you're gonna clean your room by Friday, but you don't do it until Saturday, well, she's gonna be pissed. But what if you told your mom you're gonna clean your room by Sunday and you do it on Saturday, then she's gonna be happy. The market is kind of like your mom. And in a way, I'll be over at her house later tonight. All jokes aside, let's actually take a look at some of the CPI data and see which categories rose the most in this recent report. So as we can see here, energy was the highest category at a 29.3% increase year over year. Now within that sector alone, gasoline is up a whopping 49.6%, which is probably why it's so expensive to fill up lately. Now usually I get my gas at Costco and I don't know about you guys, but these days the lines for the Costco gas are so long that I often have to go super early or super late just to not wait 20 minutes to fill up. Meat, poultry, fish, and eggs are up 12.5%, which is pretty high, as well as used cars and trucks are up over 37.3%. Now that's pretty staggering, but if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that it's mostly due to supply chain issues and semiconductor issues related to COVID. According to the economists and the Fed, we're expected to see that imbalance of supply and demand fade slowly as the effect of the virus on economic activity eases. That should free up supply chain issues and help bring inflation down, but that's not 100% for certain either. Okay, so what does all this data mean for stocks? Inflation has a chain effect on the economy that usually fares poorly for certain stocks. Since inflation leads to higher prices, the costs that go into producing a good or service are higher. That means that companies will likely raise the price of their products in order to maintain their profit margins. When prices go up, for example, say at Chipotle, they might raise the price of their burrito from $8 to $10 in order to maintain their profit margin. Customers across the nation might not be able to buy burritos as much, leading to smaller revenues. Overall, there's not one good answer for how to handle your portfolio during times of high inflation. Most experts will point towards value stocks and companies that will have strong cash flows, which typically will outperform during times of inflation. As we'll discuss later on, growth stocks are gonna be negatively affected by inflation, as well as rising interest rates. Interest rates are one of the tools that the Fed has to try to fight inflation, but as a result, our growth stocks will suffer. Besides inflation, 
unemployment data from last Friday points to an increasingly tight labor market. What that means is that hiring employees is becoming more difficult and it's actually placing upward pressure on wages, which gives companies a harder time. If you were paying Taylor Swift to be your barista for 15 bucks an hour, well, everything is now more expensive. So now Taylor wants $20 an hour and that's gonna put a lot of pressure on you as the business owner. When you combine inflation and a tight labor market, you're most likely going to get the attention of the Federal Reserve. So on January 5th, the Fed released their meeting minutes from their December policy meeting that gave investors more context regarding the interest rate hikes and the tapering of asset purchases. Tapering is another tool that the Fed will try to use to battle inflation in addition to raising rates. And as soon as those minutes were released, all the major indexes and the broader crypto market aggressively sold off. So what did they say in the Fed minutes that caused this sell-off? Well, to summarize it really quickly, the officials noted that even though there was a very high and strong economic outlook paired with higher inflation and a larger balance sheet, they concluded that they wanted to raise interest rates sooner rather than later. While we knew some interest rate hikes were coming this year, we didn't expect them quite as quickly, which is part of the reason why the market freaked out. During the past year, the Fed has been inconsistent with their plans, causing uncertainty among investors. In June 2021, which was last June, the Fed anticipated no rate hikes in 2022 and only would have rate hikes that happened in 2023. But then in September, they changed their mind and signaled that they could raise rates once in 2022. Then in December, the Fed changed their mind again and signaled that they would raise the rates three times in 2022. And that escalated pretty quickly, but it doesn't end there because Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan projects that the Fed will raise rates four times and all of this is causing the markets to freak out. Now, what do interest rates have to do with the stock market? Well, surprisingly, interest rates have everything to do with the stock market. There are many ways interest rates affect the stock market and I'll link an article in the description below that'll explain them. But today I'm gonna focus on one of the more important effects that interest rates have on stocks, especially growth stocks. Higher interest rates are really bad for growth stocks, especially the the hyper growth stocks because a lot of these companies are unprofitable and they're heavily using debt. As interest rates rise, the cost to borrow also rises, which is a negative for these companies, especially those that depend on these loans. One of the ways you can value a company's stock is through finding the sum of all of its expected future earnings, typically up to five or 10 years into the future. This method is called the discounted cash flow model. Now, if you're a bit of a nerd and you wanna learn more about this process, I'll link some articles for you in the description about that. Now, these future earnings are multiplied by a discount rate in order to figure out their present value. The discount rate is typically the treasury rate. The higher the discount rate, the lower the future earnings are gonna be. So you can see where this is getting a little bit interesting here. Since a lot of these popular growth stocks are unprofitable or barely profitable, their stock price is heavily reliant on future earnings. Now when interest rates rise, discount rates will also increase substantially and that negatively affects the present value of their future earnings or their stock price. Ultimately, the current negative trend we're seeing in tech and growth stocks is not necessarily about the actual company's products and long-term goals, but more about the valuation for these companies. During 2022, many expect that these companies' valuation come down to smaller and more reasonable multiples as interest rates rise. If you are interested in more in-depth research, we often release extra premium articles and content over on my Patreon. So if you're interested in that, I will leave a link for you guys down below. Now, don't feel obligated. There's no pressure to sign up. All right, so what should we do about inflation for our stock portfolios and our asset portfolios? If you're a passive investor for the long term and you're invested in ETFs or index funds, you don't really have to change much of your strategy. Since you're buying for the long term, dollar cost averaging into the market on a consistent basis is still probably the best strategy. If you're overexposed to the growth sector in your total portfolio, you may want to rotate out of some of those speculative positions and into more value and dividend stocks for this year. While stocks do get hurt by inflation, other assets can do tremendously well. So there was a paper published called The Best Strategies You Can Employ During Inflationary Times, and they basically found that traded commodities have historically performed best during high and rising inflation. So those are things like copper, gold, silver, iron, and oil. Now, another sector that does well against inflation is energy. So you could look into some investments like in ETFs that focus on the energy sector. Lastly, with real estate, while it is a good thing to lock in a low interest rate right now, not many people have a ton of money to do that. But if you are able to get some real estate, the research paper does find that on average, it does hold its value during inflationary times. Dividend stocks are also a great way to defend against inflation as well. If you're interested in dividend investing for 2022, I'm going to leave that video right up here and make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.